Yo YouTube, what's up? I'm Tim. We got Justin and AC here. This is for the Cash Guy and AC Sports Report, Sports News Insider, and the MLB Baseball Blogs. We're just basically running down the trades that happen today in Major League Baseball as the trade deadline approaches tomorrow at 4 p.m. Eastern. We will start with the biggest trade of them all and probably potentially the biggest trade of this entire trading deadline. Yobaldo Jimenez of the Colorado Rockies has been dealt to the Cleveland Indians for a few minor leaguers. And Justin, I believe you had the names of these minor leaguers, didn't you? I absolutely do. They're actually one, two, and three prospects for this organization for the Cleveland Indians. Drew Pomeranz, Alex White, who has seen MLB action this season, and Matt McBride. Yeah, and uh, normally I would kind of look at that and say, you know, you're a team that, yeah, you're adding a great pitcher, but you're not going to win the World Series. But, you know, it's they're in a position there where they add someone that probably puts them in a position where they could make the playoffs this year. And Yobaldo Jimenez is only um, 27 years old. That being said, the fact that his record is 6-9, and nine, no sexual reference intended, and he has a 420 ERA this season kind of scares you a little bit. But then you look at the fact he was 19 and 8 last year with the 288 ERA, and we saw that first half what this guy can really do. Um, and I think if he can put together a full season for these guys, or even a half of a season, then they're in a position right now where I, I certainly believe that they could make a run in a few seasons. I mean, at this point, I, I don't see it happening. But I think in a few years, this trade will really pay off. Yeah, man. I mean, like, you talk about... The thing The thing I have with the ball, though, is you talk about streaky hitters and how they can be, like, a little dangerous as far as long-term contracts. The ball, is kind of a streaky pitcher. So, you know, it's like you don't know what you're going to get out of him right away. But I feel like um, this is a good trade for the Indians because they're in a position where they, they're winning right now, they can win the division, and they could make a run this year, and if not, the Baldo's still young. So, I mean, that, that works out for them pretty well. And to be honest, I don't know any of the guys that they gave up for them. I don't know the names. Like, yeah, they're, they're one, two, three, and like they're, they're the first prospect, the second prospect, and the third prospect in their system. So... You would certainly think that the Rockies are giving back a pretty good return. I mean, the, the fact that they moved on from him after the season he had last year and after all the potential we've heard about this guy having, to me, is kind of strange. And maybe it leads you to think that there was something more to this. But I think that right now, there's really nothing you can say. I mean, there are some reports that there could be, you know, that type of player that goes back, he can hit off the bench. A guy like a Seth Smith could go back with the ball of Jimenez. This, the way, uh, this would be the perfect example. The way Ben Francisco went back with Cliff Lee to the Phillies when he originally came there. That type of player. Seth Smith's a nice outfielding piece. I don't see that as likely because we are hearing now that the Indians are likely, or it's basically a done deal, it's just a matter of time, that they will acquire Ryan Ludwig from the Padres, won't they, Justin? Yeah, Tim, Ryan Ludwig coming to the Cleveland Indians maybe today. Um, Ryan Ludwig has not been bringing the bat that well to San Diego. Surprisingly, he's bringing the defense to San Diego, actually. You can see him sometimes making those exciting plays that are usually on MLB Network at the Prime 10 plays or Prime, prime 9 plays, whatever the hell they do it. But I think Ryan Ludwig, if he gets traded to Cleveland, they're not going to go out and ship them like their number four prospect like they gave up their numbers one, two, and three star uh, prospects to the Colorado Rockies. Yeah, I mean, this is more of a low-risk, high-reward type thing. You bring in a veteran presence and moving from uh, San Diego to Cleveland. I mean, Cleveland's not the greatest hitter's ballpark, but it sure is hell better than uh, hitting in San Diego. Another smaller move that happens for a team that's in second place is the national the Nationals trade um, Jason Marquis, uh, the right-handed pitcher to the Arizona Diamondbacks. Marquis has been pretty successful in his career, but he bounces around from team to team because it always seems like he'll have one good year and then the next good next year he won't be the same. I remember he was on fire with the Rockies the other year, and then he's kind of fallen off since then. 
He's 32 years old. He has a 3.95 ERA. I mean, th there's not a whole lot else to say with this move. He's a nice addition for the Diamondbacks. I think that's basically what is it. Um, there Sam, I want to get something right into this. Sorry to cut you off, AC. Jason Marquis has not been successful with the Nationals whatsoever. This guy really has to bring it. So that's all I have to say. Yeah, and uh, I'm just basically scrolling down MLBTradeRumors.com. The Orioles are looking to move on from Derek Lee. I mean, if you're a team that goes out and needs a extra bat, is this not a good guy to add, AC? I don't see why um, more teams haven't shown, like, big interest in Derek Lee. You know what I mean? Because he's, he's a proven bat. He, he's proven that he can hit. That's That's for sure. And it's another one of those, you know, little veteran leadership guys. Um, if I'm looking for something that'll, like, fortify your lineup or, or give you a little extra pop in your lineup, Derek Lee's a, a good guy to have. So, why not? Yeah, and that basically sums it up there. I think Derek Lee's 35 years old. He's not what he used to be, but I don't think he's going to be too much of a hit lot or on the cap. And, I mean, right, or not the cap, but on your payroll, they, they don't have the cap. That was just a stupid statement. But um, the payroll, I don't think there's going to be a huge hit on Because he only made seven, a little over $7 million this season. So I think basically you're talking about a guy who you get for a few million for the rest of the season. And he can really, he, he could be a team. I heard the Pirates had some interest and didn't bring a big enough package. But I, I'd be really surprised if the Pirates uh, didn't go out and try and address a first baseman before the deadline. So maybe at the last hour they add in one more piece for him and go get him. Uh, there's also some other rumors. I mean, the Pirates have talked about Josh Willingham, who, who is a guy that I would expect. I mean, he's always been a guy I've expected to be moved over the, t over the year, or what the hell am I saying, over the course of this trade deadline. But I think that um, you... There's a lot of the teams that needed outfielders have kind of dropped off. I think a good place for him to land could potentially be the Atlanta Braves, who have kind of been the odd team out in all these trade rumors. They were in on Beltron, Giants got him. They were in on Pence, Phillies got him. They got to go out and make a move, don't they? The Braves are getting screwed at this point. Um, they need to be, in my opinion, they need to be a little more aggressive in their uh, the players that they go after. I mean, Willingham could work for them, but. It's not Hunter Pence, and I know that a lot of Braves fans are pretty pissed that uh, Pence came here. So, I mean, I, I still think they, they desperately need an outfielder. And, you know, Willingham could definitely work for them, but uh, they need to make something happen, in my opinion, if they're going to make any any kind of run at all. Yeah, I agree. I have to agree. They even missed out on Johnny Goins, for Christ's sakes. Exactly. So. They really have to, they have to bring somebody in. I mean, maybe Josh Willingham can bring, come into the Braves organization, but we all have to see it by tomorrow. Yeah, and I mean, the Braves, what I've heard is that they don't have a ton of room to add. Josh Willingham is a nice small piece. I know people have killed me for saying that, oh, man, just bring in Josh Willingham and we'll be happy. But Josh Willingham is a guy that can really help out a team. He can hit 25, 20 home runs in a season. So I don't understand why everyone has an issue with this. Um. Heath Bell, let's get to Heath Bell, because he's been a guy that I think everyone's expected to get traded this whole time, and there really hasn't been that team that's emerged. AC, where do you think Heath Bell ends up? Because I think we all believe that he will get dealt. I don't I don't know. I mean, a any team that needs a reliever should be going after Heath Bell with, you know, some a little bit of aggressiveness, because he's, by in my opinion best one on the market, um, say, with, with the only competition coming from his teammate, Mike Adams. So, I mean, I'd love to see him in, in Philly. Uh, that's no question about that. I'd love to see another relie another solid reliever like him in, uh, on our team. But, I mean, any team that needs a reliever right now, if you're not going after Heath Bell, I don't know why. You know what I mean? Yeah. Justin, where do you see him ending up? Well... Everybody said the Cardinals. I'm going to stick with that. I think the Cardinals are going to make a move for Heath Bell. And it'll be surprising if they possibly give up what, just like what the Cleveland Indians do to acquire uh, Ubaldo. I mean, they're going to give up maybe their number one, maybe number two prospect 
just of where he fell. Yeah, so I'm going to stick with the Cardinals on this one. And just to stay on Cardinals news here, Tim, sorry to cut you off, but the Cardinals did acquire Raphael for call from the Los Angeles Dodgers today. Yeah, that's a nice little move. I mean, he's always been tremendous on defense. He's not a great offensive piece, but he's a pretty nice one. And uh, Los Angeles has had him for quite a while since he left the Braves. Uh, uh, so something breaking while we make this video is that the Cubs are not going to trade Carlos Pena, so that is out, out the door at this point. Uh, final, uh, I, I believe that Heath Bell will end up as a member of the New York Yankees. I think that the Cardinals will not make a hard enough push. And I think the Yankees feel a need to go out and make that move. One other guy, I think Michael Bourne could get dealt, but you're going to have to bring in um, someone. You're going to have to trade someone fairly big for this guy. Tim, I hate to cut you off once again, <laughs> but if the if Michael Bourne gets dealt, I'm going to feel so sorry for the Houston Nationals. I think I think the whole outfield is done. You lose Pence last night. Now you're going to plan on moving Michael Bourne. I mean, crap, who else do you guys have left in that outfield? You have Carlos Lee, who plays first base half the Well, time. he's old. Yeah, he's, I mean... He's done. Yeah, he's yeah done. you're right. I mean, the Astros, Ed Wade has just run that team into the ground. He made a horrible trade for Roy Oswald. Uh, he made a trade last night for Hunter Pence where he got some good potential pieces, but he could have done way more with the trade. If they, I'm the owner of the Astros, Ed Wade is gone. Yeah, Absolutely. exactly. Gone. I mean... You saw what happened here in Philly. The guy can draft respectably. I don't know if that's him, but he can't do shit once it comes to the major league level. I mean, that, that was just... He is an awful, awful GM. New ownership there. Hopefully they're smart. And Justin, who is the one guy that uh, that you said was also uh, traded somewhere? Doug Fister and uh, David Pauley <laughs> going to the Detroit Tigers for Francisco Martinez, Casper Wells, I think he's seen a little bit of MLB action, and Charlie Furbush. Okay, so since I can't say the name of Doug, you know what, without laughing, because I try to be mature. Doug Fister. Yeah, I try to be mature on this show, but I'm not very good at it. We'll just call him Dougie Fresh. <laughs> <laughs> he is 3-12 and this season, but don't let that fool you. He's been with the Mariners, 3.33 ERA. He's a nice pickup. I still think they, that the Tigers should go out and add another starting pitcher, but uh, other than that, AC, what do you think? The Tigers desperately needed a pitcher, so I mean, I guess they're happy with whatever they can get at this point, even if it is Doug Fister. Uh, <laughs> damn it, I started laughing. <laughs> I, I can't say his name without laughing, that's great, but I mean, it's not a huge deal, it didn't make a huge splash, but it's... it's I guess it's just a, a starting pitcher that you add. I, I don't see the Tigers doing much of anything in the playoffs this year, so this feels basically meaningless to me. That's yeah, all I have. And hopefully the, the Tigers don't make the World Series. I mean, even though my dad's a Tigers fan, hopefully they don't they don't make the World Series. Just so I don't, we don't have to say that name the whole World Series with laughing and just looking like complete idiots. But I mean, it's a funny name. There's no questions about it. Me and AC tried to make the AL West preview for about 30 minutes at the beginning of this year, and we just couldn't do it, because once we heard his name, he started cracking up. You guys probably think our maturity level is small. I think the same thing about you guys, so we're equal. I'm Tim, he's Justin, AC Sports News Insider, Cash Gun, AC Sports Report, Major League Baseball, Baseball Blogs. Blogs. We'll see you later.